Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and in today's bass guitar lesson, I wanna show you how to learn rock bass guitar in less than 10 minutes. If that sounds good, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar and I specialize in helping beginner to intermediate bass players. And last week we released a lesson called How to Learn Walking Bass in Less Than 10 Minutes. And that lesson got some incredible feedback and we also got some requests through to make it into a series. So today's bass guitar lesson is called How to Learn Rock Bass in Less Than 10 Minutes. So let's have a listen to what we're gonna be working on today. Guys, just before we hit the lesson content, I want you to know that there's a completely free PDF that comes with this lesson where you can see everything we've discussed today written out in standard notation and a tab. There is a link in the description below where you can grab your copy absolutely free. Also, if you wanna grab the backing track that we're using in this lesson today, it's called Sweet Illusions, and it's part of our classic rock jam backing track album, which you can get over at ebassguitar.com. Just check out the products menu and you'll see it right in there. So whenever you're playing any song or bass line, you must fundamentally understand the chords or chord sequences which run behind it, because this will give you the context and the understanding for what's going on. So in Sweet Illusions, there are two chord sequences that we need to know. So I'm gonna take you through the first one now, which is in the introduction and the A section of this backing track. So the first chord sequence is a D flat. Then it goes to a C flat at fret two or a B, depending how you want to look at it. And then a G flat at fret two, and then back to the D flat at fret four and each of those chords lasts two bars each and the best thing we can do as a rock bass player is just literally outline those chords with long notes to begin with so that is the first a section now there is a chorus section in this tune and the chorus goes to an a flat at fret four one two three and then to a c flat for a bar at fret two on the A string, and then to a D flat for two bars at fret four on the A string. And then that chord sequence is repeated again. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's get that down so we're super comfortable. I'll play it without the track first and then with the track. The most important thing when playing rock bass is to play with attitude and make sure you strike the string hard and with definition. So let's play it first of all. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. C flat, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then that is repeated again. Now let's play the B or the chorus section. So one, two, three, four. 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 Cool, so let's try that with the backing track now.
Now, believe it or not, as a bass player, you are 100% doing your job there just by simply outlining the chord sequence. But the chances are you probably want to push this on a stage now and add some rhythmic interest. There are two places we can take this now. The first one is to outline a groove or repeated rhythmic pattern, or the second one is to create a pumping eights rock feel. I'm going to show you how to do both of those now. Let's start off with the groove. The best place to find the groove is to follow the drummer's kick drum or bass drum pattern. And there are two patterns that are going on in Sweet Illusions. The first one over the A section or the verse is this standard rock feel. So it's one, two, three, four. So let me talk about how to play that. This is very simply one, two, and three, four. So it's three notes. The first note is on beat one. The second note is halfway through beat two. So one, two, and three, four. And then the third note is on beat three. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, bum, bum. And this is the probably the most important rock or pop bass groove that you need to know right out of the gate. So this will work across the whole of the bass, uh, the first A section. Now, the B section, there is this pushed feel. It's actually slightly simpler and it just goes like this. So it's one, two, three, four, bum. What it's doing is it generally following the rhythm that the whole band is playing. So it is just like this. So it's beat one, and then the second note is placed on beat two and. So one, two and. And it's called pushed because it's pushed just before the third beat on beat two and. So let me play you those two grooves in isolation, then we'll do it with the backing track. So one, two, three, bam, boom. Into the chorus now. So let's see what that sounds like with the backing track. So the other most important feel you need to know how to play really well as a rock bass player is the pumping eighths groove. And this is very simply this, one, two, three, four. And all we're doing is playing two notes per beat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three. But this needs to be consistent and we need to try and aim to have all of the notes played long and we need to play with attitude with our right hand. Often beginner to intermediate bass players can struggle getting the alternate fingering going on here. So what I suggest you do is start off by just playing one note per beat to begin with, but really long. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Make sure every note is placed on the first 
finger. So try that to begin with, and then to start speeding it up and adding in the eighth notes is to go one, two, one, two, one, two, because you'll always know that the notes which are on the beat are on the first finger. Because what often happens is bass players get themselves in a bit of a muddle by going with like one, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, by not doing strictly alternate fingering. So that is the trick to making the pumping eighth groove really work. So let's play it again. One, two, three, farm. Let's try it with the backing track so you can hear what this sounds like in context and you'll notice it has a real sense of forward propulsion to it. So it's a great rock groove. So guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. The Bass Lab Plus is my private members training program where I teach beginner to intermediate bass players how to play the best bass guitar of their lives. So if you've always loved bass or perhaps you're returning to bass after many, many years off or you found yourself playing bass because there are too many guitarists in the band, this is a program which is going to teach you all the skills you need to play a great, great rock bass. So fundamentally the program is easy to understand and will allow you to make progress really, really quickly by giving you just the most important information you need. So I urge you to jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. You can join free today with a 14 day trial. So, so far we really have covered the foundation of how to play great rock bass guitar. So if you're pinning down the chord sequence, playing a great groove or playing a really consistent pumping eighth notes feel, you have a great foundation but the chances are you want to push this on a stage further. So let me give you one quick idea before we finish this lesson. The next most powerful note we can add into our rock bass lines is the octave. So if I put down the D flat here, we have an octave sitting directly under our hand using this L shape here. So two uh, strings down, two frets along like this. And this octave shape appears all over the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the octave to the bass lines that we've already discussed earlier. So on the groove, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the note which is on beat two and up the octave. So what we end up is with this pattern. So one, two, three, four. One, two, and 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 three, four. And when we hit the chorus or B section, what we're going to do is this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And put the second note up the octave. You can try this also with the pumping eights feel as well. There are loads of ideas that you could do like this. Like that. But first of all, just try it with the groove by adding one note up the octave and see what effect that has. To finish this lesson off, what I'm gonna do is show you where these ideas can go now. So we're gonna put the introduction up the octave. So we get the D flat up at fret 11 here, and then the C flat at fret nine on the D string, and then the G flat, 
at fret um, 789 on the A string. Then I'm gonna try some of these pat octave patterns that I've showed you before and then break out a little bit so you can see really where these ideas can start going. <laughs> Guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed the lesson, make sure you download the free PDF which comes with this lesson. There's a link in the description below and you'll see absolutely everything we've discussed today written out in standard notation and tab. Also, if you're looking to push your bass playing onto that next stage, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus, where there's a full, easy to understand program for the beginner to intermediate bass player. You can join free today with a 14 day trial. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com. <laughs>